dystopia warning, obviously. There's always a need for a dystopia warning, isn't there? The horrors persist, don't they? Nightly. If you've been on the old Space Karen app today, otherwise known as the Portal to Hell, previously known as Twitter, you'd have probably seen the term Moe Marxist being thrown around quite a lot, along with Toff Trots or Shandon Easters, you know. It's all a little bit silly, really. But I think the reason that people are throwing those terms around needs to be looked at in a bit more detail. And I think it relates specifically to Grace Blakely appearing on BBC Question Time last night. I don't know much about her. I didn't watch it because, um, frankly, I'm angry enough without putting myself through Question Time this week. If I wanted to criticise a particular individual, like I have previously Owen's ideas, I'll do it. It's not about that. And a lot of this is actually the fault of the BBC. Now, I've never particularly liked the term champagne socialist, but to butcher and paraphrase something that Marina Perkins once said, champagne's good and so is socialism, so what's the issue? Well, I personally am not rich, obviously, but I will say, for good measure, that I do occasionally get invited to a good party and I've got no issue with drinking their champagne. But I think anyone that's trying to fight the good fight, uh, that can afford to, is a good thing, ultimately. Anyone that's going to be okay either way, that's trying to stick up for those that won't be, fair play to them. But one thing I will say is that it's infinitely easier to call for what are broadly unachievable aims if you aren't faced with the brutal reality of struggle, if you aren't facing decline, if you're not struggling in a cost of living crisis, if you're not at risk of homelessness. It's easier to be an idealistic revolutionary, like a lot of commentators on certain factions of the left are. It's all a little bit common people, isn't it? Now, one of the biggest issues that I have with this is the fact that the BBC only really seems to platform commentators on either side of the divide routinely that went to private school. I have absolutely no ambition or interest in being a conventional commentator or broadcaster on the BBC. But it is galling to me that it seems that a private education is a prerequisite when it comes to offering your opinion to millions of people. The same also applies to journalism. But on the other hand, as someone that came from nothing, didn't move much further on since coming from nothing, that's built like her own platform from nothing and has faced heinous threats and abuse consistently from certain left-wing factions just because I don't see the point in shagging the ghost of Corbyn. It's a bit much to see those same people defending, you know, like ultra-rich people just because those ultra-rich people say what they want to hear. Not considering that it's probably a bit easier for the ultra-rich to say what they want to hear because they're not going to lose anything, are they? They're going to be okay with another conservative government if it comes to that. Now, what a lot of these commentators that are quite privileged on the left don't seem to realise is there's very little appetite for people kicking off en masse about this conservative government specifically. And you're not going to be in any position to make any form of meaningful change in opposition. There's nothing wrong with being idealistic. Many of these commentators, I actually agree with what they want. I understand and share many of their frustrations. But as someone that actually lives the reality of what the people that follow me are going through in terms of the cost of living crisis, you know, extensively long NHS waiting lists, no private care, and my lived experiences broadly, I've been forced to be pragmatic. We've got 4 million kids living in poverty, nearly 8 million on an NHS waiting list, 500 avoidable deaths per week because of the state of our NHS. Hundreds of thousands dead from COVID, hundreds of thousands dead from austerity. Removing the Conservatives isn't just a priority, it's an emergency. And due to the limitations of our voting system, we have no choice but to make that next government Labour. They are the opposition. They're the only people that have got a shot of getting the Conservatives out. But that's not the same as cheering on everything that they do. And that's the nuance that a lot of people fail to acknowledge. I want progressive left-wing policy. I just know that the route to actually achieving that involves actually winning an election. Yeah. And unfortunately, as much as I find it galling and often extremely hard to stomach, that comes with making concessions. That involves appealing to people that might not be traditional Labour voters. Those on the fence, those that might have voted Tory previously. Now, the problem with Jeremy Corbyn is that he preached solely to the choir. I think the problem that we're starting to see with Keir Starmer, or a problem that I'm starting to identify, is that he might be preaching solely to those that he wishes to convert. 
I've had quite a pragmatic approach to the pledges because politics is unrecognisable from when Keir Starmer made those initial pledges. We have had war, we've had the coronavirus, we've had British politics descending into the gutter, Boris Johnson, party gate. And we've also had a Conservative Party that have run our country into the ground. There's a lot of things that I've not liked about Labour's approach, but I see why they're doing most of it. As far as I'm concerned personally, there's absolutely zero excuse for accepting a defector like Elphick. I think it looks terrible. Yes, I see that strategically it will undermine Rishi Sunak. And I also think there is an argument for saying that it will possibly help people come over from places like, you know, the Tories or Reform, but it's a bit of a gamble. And the kind of gambles that I think Labour should be making at the moment involves being progressively bold. I think that while they're polling at 48%, as they have been for the last year, they should be focusing their efforts on offering a really progressive alternative to the Conservative Party. A Conservative Party that the public have broadly in two separate local elections, dismissed. Well, they've not just dismissed them, they've wholesale rejected them. People don't want division, culture wars, cheap political tricks, the Westminster bubble, regressive populism. These are not things that people want. They, these are things that people were voting against. They want change. They don't want more Tories. Now, that's not me saying I think Labour are red Tories, no. It's me saying that their decision-making and their appalling comms is giving fuel to the fire of those that, that, that claim they are. I know Labour's spinning a lot of plates with the press and the, and the bias, which makes it much more challenging for them to come out with progressive policy. There's also the risk that the Tories will steal their policy prior to a general election manifesto. Also, it has to be said, it's not just those on the right that are encouraging people to vote against their best interests. I've seen this from, you know, certain commentators I've previously mentioned completely failing to explain to the people that follow them and trust them about the shortcomings of first past the post when it comes to voting for who they want to. And the first past the post, like it or not, I don't. It's Labour or Tory, isn't it? I'm not going to obfuscate our political reality in order to, what, con a few votes, which will inevitably leave people worse off because those votes don't count. I'm not going to do that because I'm not a fucking Tory. That's Tory behaviour. I've not spent my time encouraging people to vote for one particular party anyway. I focus more on tactical voting because that's how we will get the Tories out. But afterwards, the Stop the Tories Stop Vote campaign has a plan to put pressure on the government so that we are influencing them, not the press. I am a Labour member and I've always been open about that, but I've spent the last four years making content that is purely anti-Tory, using the reach that I have to tell people the reality of what the government is doing so they can make an informed decision. Telling people just purely in all of your content that the opposition is shit won't change anything. All it will do is maintain this hell. Some of those commentators might be able to afford that. I can't millions can't. And the fact that the BBC only really platforms people that come from a position of privilege, well that leaves millions of people losing out on voices which they might relate to. It's just maintenance of the status quo, frankly. And one of the primary things that Britain needs to get over is its deference, its cap doffing, because it just ends up being an act of self-harm. The rich stay rich, the poor stay poor. And you know, eat the rich, innit?